episode of the Ever Black Podcast is brought to you by Death Wish Hot Rods and Customs. Check out their Instagram for all their new t-shirts, caps, beanies, cups, and the all-new Atomic Death lineup. Hey, Michael, how are you, mate? I'm pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, mate. Good. Well, it's great to talk to you, man. So how's everything going over there? Um, very good. Uh, just we in a couple of weeks, we start rehearsing for a, a big tour. We're going to do 11 weeks straight. We're doing six weeks in Europe and and, <laughs> and some more in, in, in Latin America from there. So, yeah. Awesome, Kind man. of bracing ourselves for that. It's going to be cool. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Well, I saw a bit of footage from uh, Varkin, uh, and holy shit, man, right. that looked like a ton of fun, dude. Like, <laughs> there was a couple of people there, you know? Looks like oh, yeah. <laughs> Those, so, yeah, we had headlining slots at, like, Summer Breeze, and Varkin, and Reload, and a bunch of those big German ones uh, around the album release as well. So it was very well-timed, and uh, we did signing sessions, and all kinds of it was a uh, it was a whole circus. It was great. It was quite a quite a spectacle playing those big festivals for sure. Yeah, yeah. It looked like the population of Australia was crammed in there. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough people. No, it's a good time. It's a good time. But you know, those mega stages are super awesome. My personal taste though is more to play uh, in a in a club or some or a theater. But uh, at the same time. If I didn't ever got to do these big festivals things, then I would be, I'd be really uh, yearning for that. I'm sure. But yeah, it's just, uh, it's kind of like it's just it's kind of it's more of a spectacle than anything. It's like so you put on a really big show, and uh, yeah, it's it's very it's hard to connect with that many people. Like I said, it's an ocean of people, mm. and I literally can't see the end. You know, it's like to the horizon of <laughs> people. So. It's pretty it's nuts, time. but it's yeah. really beautiful to see, though. After after this uh, this whole, you know, after the apocalypse, you know, to see to see people come together like that is is super awesome. Have you noticed so much a bit a difference being out there? Like, does it feel like a different world being out there in the world, or is it it's still sort of very familiar? You know what? It just isn't. I was really expecting it to feel a lot different, but it just kind of doesn't. It just kind of feels like it. Like that whole chapter didn't happen. <laughs> it's weird in a way, <laughs> but it, hey, you know, I was, you know, I mean, we started, we started, we fired up the touring side of things again back in April. Uh, we did a North American tour, and we had not been on stage for like two and a half years at that point, wow. almost two and a half years. So that was nuts, you know. I mean, I hadn't had that long break since I started playing, at the age of thirteen or fourteen, you know. Um, our enemy surely never had a long break like that. So, you know, it's just, it's pretty wild getting back to it. You know, there's a lot of things running through your head before that first show. But, you know, it just kind of like, it's like riding a bike, I guess. You just kind of, you know, so you just get back into it. No problem. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what did you do on your, uh, I mean, obviously you're working on this new album, but I mean, when you weren't working on the album, what did hey, you do with hey, all that exactly. time? Exactly. You know, <laughs> um, <laughs> I I don't know. I moved as well. I, I did a lot of personal things, you know, like mm. with my personal life. I, I just sort of uh, restructured things a little bit. But that was that we which was great. And to have that time to do it, um, and then also, yeah, I mean, it was really cool to have the the album project, you know, and. Uh, writing those songs, you know, music and lyrics, and all the artwork or shooting all the videos, just the, and the, you know, just the, everything to do with the album. It's a big project and it was just super, really very nice to have something like that to sort of immerse yourself in, you know, doing those uh, not so fun times. Yes, no, I understand that for sure. Uh, well, I mean, of course, the, the album De uh, Deceives is, just incredible, man. I think it's one of my favorite Arch Enemy albums. It's like yeah. so many killer tracks on cool. there, man. Like I listen to it and I just go, man, I've, I, like I've, I've had it on loop and I, it it's definitely got repeat listens in there. 
and more. Like I, I keep going back to it. Like how, how are these songs been going live though? Like how's the instant reaction been? Cause you've had the singles. For you know, up. yeah, exactly. We had this different approach on this album, you know, that was, this worked out super well for us with mm. the, the, you know, we put out the first single like 10 months ahead of the album release which is really nuts, you know, yeah. I, from my perspective anyway, because we've never, never done anything like that before. But it's, it just worked out so well that I'd like almost like to say that it's my idea, but it wasn't. It was the record label's idea. But uh, the, the singles really connected with people, you know, and when we, like, even when we were in the States and Canada in April, May this year, you know, we had th- three of the singles out at that point, you know, Handshake with Hell, The Sea mm. Receiver, and House of Mirror- Mirrors. And we played those. And it just, they went down probably the best of, of everything that we were doing, you know. So it's like, <laughs> well, you know, so, yeah, so it's like, wow, you know. So we just one of those luck. We did it very fortunate in that way, that actually, that our new music is really is resonating with our audience, you know. You know, we, yeah. we just quietly sort of celebrated our 25th anniversary as a group uh, last year. Um, and, you know, to have our 11th studio album out now and have new songs that are just going down, like getting some of the best reactions of the night live, is uh, it's really gratifying, of course. A little bit surprising, but hey, I'll take it. <laughs> and you could have taken credit for it. You know that. You said, yeah, it's all my idea. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I do. I usually do that, but uh, this one I can't. <laughs> I was extremely skeptical because you know usually we just put out yeah. two singles, yeah, and then boom, you know we're on tour and you know the album's out and that's that. But you know, of course, now there was it's kind of like you know there was no touring in sight, you know, mm. so it's like very hard to plan things. So it was it worked out very well with the the, the way the way it all came together. And in, in regards to the album title, um, Deceivers, and, and you know, that could be interpreted in, in so many different ways, especially these days with the world yeah. we live in, with the internet and, and, and people in general. But um, what does the title mean to you? Like, how does that tie into the album cover and, and the whole concept you were working on during that time? Well, I mean, I think, you know, we were thinking about, you know, that we're living in a day and age where maybe there's a lot of people that are not really showing their true face mm. and um you know there are people that lie for a living i guess you know <laughs> yes but, uh, i don't I, you know there's all kinds of things you can you know the, but there was some uh, personal things you know in the lyrics and there's also some a little bit touching on world events i guess but you know i don't know it, it was a strange time, wasn't it? Because it seemed like the world was coming together for a minute and then it just went the opposite way. <laughs> yeah. It was uh, it was kind of chaotic. But uh, I think, you know, I'm, I'm not really... Uh, it's not really a concept album or anything like that. We've never made a concept record. We have yet to make that, you know, to make our... The Wall or something like that. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. But you know, there was that we did look at the lyrics and we found some themes. You know, you always trying to kind of connect things a little bit in in a way and just find something that you could pick up as a album title or for artwork and stuff like that. And there were quite a few songs about deceit and betrayal and being deceived and stuff like that. Mm. Talking about the double, you know, the the wall double album sort of big concept. Is that something that you've sort of been wanting to do that you just haven't found the the right subject or you know uh yeah i mean there are albums i i do like some concept albums you know i think maybe half a record would be cool like you know rush 2112 i think half the album the a side is the concept side mm. that would be kind of cool but i don't know but then it's like i don't really but you know i'm not really into long songs you know i just find it, i get bored with things go on too long so <laughs> yeah so i don't know i don't know i usually figure it's got to be strong songs and it's got to be right the uh, subject matter for sure yeah that's right that's right but uh you know of course how I don't is know. it maybe it's in the maybe maybe it will happen in the future 
Well, yeah, I, I, I think it'd be interesting to hear you guys sort of tackle something like that. But uh, how did you stay in touch with everybody? Was it over Zoom with all different time zones? Was it like the old Facebook Messenger group chat where you just send each other memes? Well, how did you, how'd you, how'd you guys do it? <laughs> um, yeah, how did we do it? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, all of that, I guess, you know. And then, um, you know, me and Daniel were in Sweden. And, you know, he's the drummer, but he's also the, he's sort of the, the recording engineer of the band. You know, he, he handles all the demo recordings and also the, some of the album uh, engineering as well. So, uh, you know, I was working with him and, you know, I collaborate a lot with him. Even write, we write songs together and stuff like that. So we were together, but then everybody else was kind of like somewhere else, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, having a long distance what is that? Related band relationship, you know, it's a little <laughs> bit difficult. We're used to just being able to just book a flight, hop on a plane, and go and do stuff, you know. But of course, that wasn't a, a, an option for a while there. So things became a little bit more, yeah, separated in a way. But then we, we were able to pull it back together again just in time, though. So that was cool. At least I made it over to Europe. She could actually work physically, be in the studio in Denmark, where we made the most of the album tracking her vocals there which is great i really prefer working face to face with everybody yeah, yeah yeah you know when people sort of just upload files and then there's a time difference and then you're like you, you're supposed to listen to that and try to get into their head what they were thinking when they were doing that and then critiquing that or giving some feedback on that and then you wait another 24 hours you know <laughs> <laughs> i don't it's just not really yeah. You know, I, I like to work a lot faster and a lot more spontaneous, you know, than, than that. So, yeah. So we were lucky in many ways. A lot of things went right for us, basically. I mean, the whole 2020 mm. was supposed to be a year off for us anyway. So, so we were not affected by 2020, you know, in our planning or financially or anything like that but of course it was a drag like it was for everybody else but we yeah. we didn't have to cancel any shows or, or anything like that which happened to a lot of our colleagues yes yeah i've spoken to a lot of bands that, that sort of went through that but uh is angela still yeah. involved with the band behind the scenes as management and stuff like that she is yeah i mean she lives in germany again and mm. she's she's doing the management side of the band, the business management I yes yeah yeah, I mean, for a long time, for a few years there, she was doing both. She was singing and doing the the management side of things, the business side of things. But now she's just focusing on the... She has a management company now. She's managing mm. some other artists as well. Yeah. How was that, though? Like, so that's uh, that's going to work down. <laughs> was, it, was it okay working with, you know, was it, I, I guess it would have been difficult for her during that time as well. But, you know, how, how do you guys uh, all sort of support each both, other? Wearing both hats? Well, uh, no, no, like over, yeah, I mean, uh, well, both. <laughs> during COVID? Yeah, during, during COVID. COVID. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, during COVID. COVID uh, I mean, we are sure we were in touch. You know, I mean, there wasn't much to talk about for the mm. first year, really. <laughs> it was, uh, but, you know, yeah, I mean, you know, she's, She's the, she, it's more like on the email with her. <laughs> She's oh. the queen of emails. Oh, really? <laughs> long, long emails. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you're hitting the road next month with, uh, you've got a few different things going on. You you got this tour with Behemoth and Carcass right. and you're going around with Napalm right. Death as well. It looks like it's going to be heaps of fun, man. Like, uh, you know, you look forward to catching up with the, the Carcassy mates and the Behemoth mates and Napalm crew. Sure, oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's all back, you know. I mean, it's kind of bizarre, you know. <laughs> For a while, it looked like, you know, is it ever going to happen again? But then suddenly, you know, we're, we're back right into it. And, you know, you're, I'm having a beer with the uh, backstage with some good old friends, some colleagues. It's cool, you know, and, yeah. and just playing live again is just fun, you know, and seeing the... The, the fans are still stoked on it and everything and the reaction to the new album is phenomenal so uh, you know couldn't really hope for couldn't wish for anything more really I mean it's just all um, coming together finally mm. 
do you still chat with the the, the carcass boys outside of of, of seeing festivals and and tours and stuff like that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we on um, yeah text. Yeah, I text with Bill and and Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. We still have some you know history and mm. you know and you know business stuff. You know that, that gets you know. It's a couple of times every year we talk about stuff like that, but then there's also you know just uh, disgusting, stupid shit. So, yeah, still mates, I guess after all these years. I love it. I love it. So I love hearing that. That's that's awesome. And I I would love to see both of you guys yeah. down here in Australia. But uh, hey, do you reckon there'd be a, a chance of of Arch Enemy coming down and and seeing us soon ish? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think we should make that happen. Yes, so, I mean that's uh, we have a Japan tour actually uh, in uh, March uh, next year. So I'm I'm thinking around that time would be a good time to pop over to see you guys as well. We're not far. We're just I mean we're just around the corner. Well, it's still quite far. It's a little bit far. I mean, <laughs> you. <laughs> that's the problem with you guys. You're just far from everywhere. Like you get to Japan, and you think, well, we're right next to. And actually, that's another six-hour flight or whatever it is. Yeah. But you know, hey. <laughs> Once you get there, it's it's always amazing. You know, we've always enjoyed our time in Australia, and uh, you know, we look forward to coming back. And yeah, we're doing and we're doing our best to making that happen in in uh, in the new year, mate. So I know there's things in the in the, the, I know that it's just I can't. It's not 100 percent confirmed as far as I know, so I can't really say too much about it. But it looks like it's going to happen. So I'm pretty. We're all pretty excited about that. I'm going to take your word for it so, then. I'm gonna put it on the calendar. Yeah. Gonna say as soon as I see those Japanese dates, it's gonna. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, yeah the, the Japanese go. dates are confirmed. They're already up there. They're already <laughs> yeah, up there. No, all right. Sale. All right. So you know, it's just like you know. Mate. I'm just saying, let's oh, get I it know. done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anyone's listening, I don't know who's doing it, but uh, I'll be there. I'm, I'm, I'm hell keen. But uh, mate, what else uh, can we expect from you from the future? Can we get more uh? spiritual beggars or another project or is it just full on arch enemy for the for the future you know for the last few years i've really focused on arch enemy and feeling quite content with that really i have to say i don't know what happened to me but i just kind of got tired of doing multiple projects Mm. (laughs) (laughs) i don't know it's just arch enemy became a lot bigger than and a lot more busy i would say yes you know, it's just a full on. It you know when I put out uh, when we put out an album like uh, Deceivers now, it takes a good uh, couple of years out of your life. <laughs> it's a big chunk <laughs> of life that just that's just like you know dedicated to that. And then when I have some time off, I, I like to have uh, I like to do other things now as well as well as you know I like to sit around and do nothing. That's when I come up with new ideas as well for music. So, you know, so if I never give myself a break, then I'm. Yeah, does it, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, am, I just, am I just being lazy? Should I start a new pro- project? Yeah. Think? No, no time. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you should, you, you need to be like Mike Patton and have at least 40 at once, you know. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, last time I looked, I've made about 30, yeah, 30 albums. 30 yeah. Albums. <laughs> nah, you're right. right mate. Enough is enough. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's it, mate. Well, uh, Mate, Michael, it's been uh, awesome hanging out with you on the show this afternoon. The new Arch Enemy album, Deceivers, is out now everywhere. We'll have all the links down in the show notes and on the site. Uh, mate, we will see you hopefully next year. And in the meantime, take uh, care and be uh, safe out there, all right? Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Same to you, and uh, see you in the new year. Woo! Cheers. All right, mate. Thanks, buddy. <laughs>